My name is Madison Paul and this piece is called Sometimes Mountain, Sometimes Sea. A blue streak that appears on the horizon when it is warm and clear. We stood looking out the large window above my desk. It was sunset and the city came lit. The suburbs darkened. It's how we knew where we were, that blue streak. We mapped ourselves to the spot and found a name for what we were looking at. Desire warps a landscape. They're mountains, but I thought of the sea. 1967, a man walks across a field. He is 22 and studying art in London, and a 190 kilometer commute he makes from his home in Bristol. The field is somewhere between the two. He goes back and forth following the same line. It is the middle of the afternoon and the sun is high and the grass is carpeted by tiny flowers. He stops at the edge, shades his eyes and lifts his camera. Click. The film is black and white. The grass takes up most of the photo, save for a patch of trees at the very back. Straight down the middle, there is a line of grass, trampled and made white because of the light. A dream in which I watch two people standing on the edge of a desert at dusk. With them is a small dog. One bends down and wraps a piece of meat in muslin cloth and then passes it to the other, who ties it to the end of a rope, then ties the rope around their hips and begins over the sand, dragging the meat. The dog whimpers, unsure, then follows. The psychoanalyst says I should be careful when passing want and need. We stood in the Tate, staring at the photograph. You asked me which part I thought was the art. The materials, the land, a body, the process, the walking, the yielding, the light, or the proof, this photograph and the line disappearing. I said process, you were still unsure. As you spoke, you moved your finger back and forth across my palm. There is a name for these unofficial paths, those softened, formed, and eventually inscribed by the collective and ongoing tread of feet and paws desire lines. Naming does something for sight. I notice the quicker route across the park to the toilet block, the deep cut gash going down to the edge of the Mary. Even cities are made of them. Take Broadway, a passage designed over the Whiskergate Path, a trail that moved bodies across Manhattan from north to south and south to north, avoiding swamps and hills for thousands of years. Desire names not the attachment, but the want to attach, you said. Desire is an encounter with absence, the psychoanalyst tells me. It lives on in lack. It is not the hand held, but the space between. It is not the line, but it's making. You left a dog-eared Carson book in the front seat of my car. What is a hole made of? Itself. In a gallery, external logics do not apply. Tell me how long you have been here for. One thing becomes another. A white cloud collapses into licks of blue and yellow and gray. A strand of hair suspended in paint, proof of passage. There's something perverted about getting close enough to corrupt the privacy of a thing that can't do the same back. Even time in here has texture. We felt the shift as we passed over the threshold. It was thick like folded velvet, then it was hollow and electric. A line made by walking hung alone on a white wall. We walked backward and time wobbled like a sheet of tin in the wind. The thing about a line though, is that the more a path is used, the more a path is used, says Sarah Ahmed. Desire's charge is discontinuous. It must be remet. Otherwise it turns to habit, turns to precedence, and then you are stuck in motion, moving further along a path you don't remember choosing. In other words, to move with desire is not self-evidently good. You stopped me on Elizabeth Street and told me to listen. Could I hear the river running beneath the bluestone? I couldn't, and neither could you. The wind blows in, slams a door. It's the beginning of winter and a clear day is rare, but I know that they are there, so still I look. Those mountains, that sea.